finally we have some nice weather as you can see it's bright and sunny sunshine <laughs> um, right I'm going to talk a little bit about Peugeot Boxer and DPF tantrums on it so Peugeot, uh, Peugeot Boxer Citroen Relay with 2.2 litre Puma engine Ford Puma engine now my one is 2015 or 16 16 56 plate and um, when I bought a van it was lovely driving nice quick no issues no smoke nothing good seven eight months later due for MOT we took it for MOT it failed on emissions why it failed on emissions couldn't suss out it was it didn't smoke it it ran fine and pulled away nicely and everything my mechanic started um, looking through the van and trying to find what it is, what's not, and um, he removed uh, parts of exhaust, removed DPF, called me and said, look, your DPF is being drilled out, most likely it's been delayed, uh, deleted. So I said, okay, um, and it's not passing MOT because of emissions and everything, and I don't I personally don't agree with DPF delete so I said right can we put another DPF in he said yeah it's expensive but yeah we can we can do that so he gets from uh, Eurocar parts gets one of the uh, pattern part uh, DPFs not not the genuine one I think it was like uh, 650 700 quid so he gets DPF uh, then he gets one of these DPF specialists to come in and uh, to reload the files for DPF and set it all up. All done, all good. Van taken to MOT, passes MOT. All brilliant. Week later, first DPF region on that van because DPF was new, you know, freshly from factory, put it in. First region, week later, it started producing excessive, excessive amounts of whitish, bluish, greyish smoke, unburned diesel. It smelled really heavily on paraffin and diesel, <laughs> proper choking, like, I <laughs> can't breathe that. And it was almost looking like, a, if you ever seen on the films or somewhere, like a tank, military tank, when... Um, it's producing a smoke screen. That's how it look. Uh, I, well, people behind me, they've been growing a cancer. You could actually see cancer growing on their lungs as I was driving away from them. So it was bad, really bad. Now, took it back to mechanic. He plugged computer in, checked everything, said everything's fine. He called mobile DPF specialist. He plugged his computer, his equipment in, Checked it up, all said everything is fine. Um, we looked online, looked various places. We couldn't find answer. Why is smoking? You can get answers about why it doesn't re regenerate. What about it's got this this code, that code? This van didn't have any codes. Everything was spot on. So. Um, He tried to replicate that in the garage, couldn't do it. So I took Van away, drove it a bit, and it starts smoking again. Soon it starts regenerating. So we're trying to go with the process of elimination. You've got a few different parts on DPF, apart from DPF itself. you got pressure differential sensor that, that uh, senses the difference in the pressure before and after DPF. Now, if that difference is small that means the EPF is clean and it doesn't uh, ask for regeneration because basically that sensor will send a signal to ECU saying it needs to be regenerated or it doesn't and if that pressure is too much I don't know in the millibars what the difference needs to be between in and out or pre or post EPF so if the difference is too big that means the EPF is blocked so it's building loads of back pressure 
and that and then sensor is sending signal back to DPF that needs to be regenerated. So, because van was trying to regenerate, means DPF sensor, pressure sensor, or differential pressure sensor is working fine. It senses that needs to be regenerated. ECU is fine because it's receiving the signal from DPF differential pressure sensor and initializing uh, regeneration, which that means, you know, tells me that DPF, um, uh, the ECU part for DPF is actually working fine. It starts regeneration, does lots of smoke, diesel smoke, because the uh, dosing or metering pump works. It pumps diesel through the fifth injector, through DPF injector. Injector works because it preheats into the vapor, into steam, the diesel that goes into DPF. So all these parts working, but it smokes a lot. So to summarize, the system works has no DPF codes or no error codes on a, uh, on OBD reader. Everything works fine. When these uh, DPF doctors or specialists, they plug in their equipment, they take readings and they're saying all the readings from all sensors are within normal parameters. But it smokes. It smokes because it does not, the DPF filter itself does not burn off the diesel that is sprayed onto it because diesel is sprayed uh, through fifth injector through this DPF injector into the pre-DPF area of the DPF uh, box supposed to that vapor supposed to land onto DPF filter onto ceramic filter onto grill catch fire basically and burn off all carbon deposits that's not happening what is happening that diesel is landing there not onto nice and warm not but not super hot uh, ceramic filter and it's exiting exhaust in terms of diesel vapor which basically is choking everyone behind my van so I had to sit down and meditate on this and I'm going back to these DPF specialists and they're saying I understand all all the sensors giving correct readings but what if sensors are wrong say for example um, a temperature sensor one of the temperature sensors or both temperature sensors they're slightly out or a lot out but not in a way that they don't work because if they don't work the ECU will throw error code saying the temperature sensor like a downstream or upstream temperature sensor is faulty so it's not that it's broken completely that it's burned through or whatever it's just giving false reading so it's taking the temperature say of 250 celsius and saying to the to ECU the temperature is of the DPF is 600 Celsius. So ECU goes, okay, DPF is hot enough, initiate regeneration. But in fact, it's not 600 degrees Celsius, it's only 250. So when diesel vapors land onto DPF, they don't burn off, they come out as a diesel vapor. So all these specialists saying to me, nah. Nah, that can't happen, mate. No, 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 that can't happen. Sensors, they either work or they don't work. And I'm like, maybe they work and don't work, but there's always thing in, in between. When they're not completely gone faulty, basically they're not burned through, so they're not shortening or anything, they're still giving uh, some value in voltage back to ECU, and ECU is uh, translating that as DPF is hot enough. So they didn't want to listen on that. So I had three garages of which one of them was performance tuning place that, you know, the guys that rim up your ECUs and do all sorts of weird and wonderful stuff, especially for performance cars and for uh, racing cars and stuff. So they got machinery and equipment to do, to deal with this. They couldn't sort it out. I had 
So two normal garages, one performance part, uh, like performance tuning place, and three mobile DPF specialists. And none of them accepted my uh, suggestion. So year and a half of basically agony, I decided I'm gonna do it myself. I'm just gonna just bite the bullet and do it myself. I bought two new temperature sensors. They've been just under 200 pound each from, from uh, Peugeot, genuine sensors. I put them in, voila, all the problems gone. It works perfect. So the issue with my DPF was that DPF was cold or not hot enough to initiate regeneration. ECU thought that is hot enough because temperature sensors have been sending wrong signal back to ECU. It's as simple as that. So two sensors, just under 400 quid, and problem solved. Now, that all happened two years ago, and since then I had no problem with DPF. Touch wood. I don't want to jinx it now, but I had no problem with DPF. And so I was trying at that time to find some YouTube video, to find information online, to try to find something which could guide me to actually help me solve this solve this problem. I had loads of I mean every, every one of these three DPF specialists said to me, you know what mate, uh, we can't you know, I can't sort it out, but I can delete it for you. I so, said, well, I started from deleted DPF that could for, on the van that couldn't pass MOT. I didn't want to delete it again. One of them suggested, you, you know, we take, you get another box, you drill one out, you clean the other one. When you need to take it for MOT, we bolt the other one that is clean. You take it for MOT, you pass the MOT, then you unbolt that one, put drilled in one, and just going back and forth like that. So like, look, I don't want to muck about with that. I just want a van that works. It's simple, simple, well, fairly simple system, but it ha you have to follow the path. I had one of the guys suggested that my dosing pump was wrong. And I said, well, how, how, how it can be wrong? It, when ECU commands regeneration, the dosing pump or metering pump initiates and works and pumps diesel fuel. So it works. It's not, it's not faulty pump. One of them said was actually quite imminent that uh, a pressure sensor is, is, is out. I said, well, if pressure sensor is out, first of all, it will throw, throw a code. And secondly, uh, it will not regenerate because it will not show differential of the pressure. So that's following the path of all the parts of the system. I came to conclusion, it must be temperature sensors that are out replace them and it works now hopefully this video will help someone uh, I'll now post uh, actually put after this video I'll put uh, pictures I found on internet of various um, parts of DPF system so you can see which ones are but temperature sensors on these vans the two of them one is the both on DPF box one is pre filter or pre ceramic filter and one is post ceramic filter pre-ceramic filter one is the blue one and the post one is the green lead one so you got blue lead and green lead they, they look identical the green lead one is longer slightly uh, the connectors look same but they're just like sort of reverse like a mirror so you can't you can't plug them into the wrong uh, socket they, they only go one way around um, yeah so that's about that and uh, I would always advise try to use genuine parts because if you try to use non-genuine parts you might get wrong readings straight away from bad uh, from non-correct temperature sensor and whilst we're here I'll just turn my camera around I'll show you I got I also in the meantime I got another DPF this one is non-genuine one I got it, um, well, let me turn the camera around, right, there it is, hello noisy, 
Right, so this is a uh, non-genuine DPF that I purchased to see maybe I can replace it or whatever but I managed to replace sensors so um, yeah there you go this is so DPF filter is, is is here it's on this section here so you got pre DPF temperature sensor this one here for some reason is black it should be blue and you got post this is the green one you got differential pressure connections pre and post and it that's where it's entering let's see if we can see the grill inside you can see grill is a bit charred in there but that is the ceramic grill so this temperature uh, sensor here measures the gases temperature of the gases on pre DPF and this one here measures the uh, temperature of the filter itself and this one uh, pressure tube here and, and takes it to DPF differential pressure sensor and measures the pressure at the filter and pressure post filter and if that pressure difference is too big that means the filter itself is um, blocked and there you go so they're quite easy to replace and the connectors just do connectors now. Right, let me just put them one by side of the other. There you go. You can see they are pretty much identical but mirrored. So you can't swap them. And I believe they're same as on Ford because this is the whole system is a Ford system. It's Ford 2.2 Puma engine and all these connectors and everything are actually Ford connectors. So hopefully some people will uh, find this helpful and save them lots of aggro and money. And here are some photos from internet I got. Uh, this is DPF with temperature sensors. You can see blue and green one. And here's a blue temperature sensor which is pre-DPF. Um, so yeah, this is a green one which is the post-DPF temperature sensor and uh right what's gonna be next one yeah next one is uh differential pressure uh, pressure sensor differential pressure sensor between pre and post dpf and this is the fifth injector you can see uh it's got black fuel line and red power cable for glow plug and this is metering pump that connects to that black fuel line 